which was a real scene that happened, you know, which was a Kiss concert in a bar mitzvah venue, but the makeup was terrible. So I have it like melting down their faces to show that these guys were working so hard um, on that stage. Your movie, Spinning Gold, uh, about your father, uh, Neil Bogart, who was the uh, founder of Casablanca Records. And I, ha I have right here my <laughs> Kiss Casablanca. Okay, so this is the... Uh, the scene for, for, for the song Shandy, okay? Because that is my wife's name. And her father gifted uh, gifted her this single. And uh, I was like, this couldn't be more perfect. <laughs> like, That's great. Um, um, and I've got my kiss shirt. And I, I'm, just, I, I'm just being a big dork. Um, I want to ask, you know, a portion of the film does deal heavily kind of with your father's relationship with Gene and Paul yeah. and kind of all that. And I was curious if the real Gene and Paul, uh, if you had any conversations with them, if they're aware of kind of the the angle of the film and the narrative and all that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, oh, it, cool. actually, for, there, were, there were years where Gene was going to produce it with with us. Oh, wow. um, and, and and I was actually um, early on when we first set it up in 1999 it was the first time I set it up. Gene was going to be a producer on the project with us. And then, you know, uh, over the years, you know, he got focused on, on more music. But when we started doing it, um, they were consequential. Um, I, I put them on the phone with the production designers, with the makeup artists, with the costume designers. You know, Paul was quick to point out that's not the guitar I would have used. I would have used this one and connected us with who that person was. You know, it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I always knew that, you know, the choice of doing the origin story of the makeup and the costumes might get people going, that's not the makeup, but, but it wasn't the makeup in 1974. They didn't figure it out yet. Um, and, and it was really bad makeup. So it would, it would, it would, it would melt down their faces. Right. And so in, we, we have a scene in there in the early in the film, which I always sort of described, which was a real scene that happened, you know, which was a kiss concert in a bar mitzvah venue, but the makeup was terrible. So I have it like melting down their faces to show that these guys were working so hard um, on that stage. Um, and the costumes weren't figured out yet in 74. We don't really get to that kind of stuff <laughs> in 78. Um, and so I always knew that was going to be a thing, but early on, you know, it was, it was the, the photos that Gene and Paul provided um, and not just them, you know, Peter, Chris, I've spoken to, you know, um, endlessly about, about the project. So they were all incredibly supportive um, and incredibly informative. That's awesome. And and it's it's really fascinating, man, you know, the, the way that the story, it, gosh, the story that, of your father and Cosmark is all that, it, it is a true story that you feel like it is something someone would tell. Like, oh, I'm going to just make up this story and this is it. And it's all real and it all really happened. And, and it's incredible to me that here we are 40 years from his passing and the story is coming out and it's almost serendipitous to how much he knew these artists, these acts were big time artists, big time acts. And it took years for people to see what he saw for people to see his vision. And that is just baffling to me. Yeah. But, but I mean, the same is true early, you know, Gladys Knight still performs, you know, the, yeah. the audience are still out there. Um, and yes, Kiss just announced the final, 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 final <laughs> tour. Um, uh, and yes, you know, we, we lost Donna, obviously, but she was doing Broadway at the end. I mean, so so yeah. it, singular talents are talents. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think what my father saw um, were singular talents, people that would be talent for the ages. And I think history has proven that to be true. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Jeremy's performance as your father was just completely like it was just incredible and i i was just he had mentioned that um um you know you kind of gave him a lot of space to kind of work with that yeah. and i wanted to kind of get your perspective on that as well yeah i mean the, the space was you know the, the contract with one another was to capture the essence of the guy not to try to mimic the voice or, or the gestures although you know Jer jeremy would start to do a little bit of that and then started looking at me and trying to mimic me a little bit um but it was really about capturing the essence of, of the drive um, and the dreamer. And, and I think he did such a beautiful job there. But once Jeremy, who's so talented, um, had that in his head, I didn't want to put edges around it. Um, you know, I, I, even things about the darker stuff, you know, I, I, my father had lots of flaws. Um, I, I think that made him who he was. I think some of his flaws were his superhero powers. You know, he was a gambler. If he didn't gamble, 
we wouldn't be here. Um, so, so some of these things um, going deeper, uh, absolutely. But, but allowing Germany to go as deep as we could, um, you know, not try to, to shave off those edges um, and ultimately um, find, you know, further <laughs> madness to the method in this guy required some freedom. Um, but it was always anchored by, by the absolute essence of this guy. And Jeremy had a great, a great opportunity to speak to Joyce, my stepmom, who was, you know, not just, you know, consequential for, for, for Kiss and Donna Summer as her manager, but was his true partner in Casablanca. Um, so she also provided incredible um, insight to him. That's very cool. Thank you so much for the insight, Tim. I really appreciate it. Very excited Thank about you. spinning Golden Theaters March 31st. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>